When you're involved with a clinical trial, generally you have a clinical trials team. So you have the primary investigator, um, which is a physician. You have the clinical trials coordinator, and that's your main point of contact. And then there are clinical trial nurses, there's clinical trial nurse practitioners and clinical trial um, uh, physician associates, clinical trial pharmacists. So there is a highly skilled um, team that's taking care of you. So your first point of contact is usually the clinical trials coordinator. And if you have any questions or concerns about your clinical tr trial, that would be the first person to go to. But if it is a question that they're not able to answer, because perhaps it's, it's more clinically focused and you, you need to have a provider perspective, um, you can speak to the nurse, the nurse practitioner, the physician associate, or the physician um, about your concern. I think it's also really important to keep in mind if you have any concerns about the ethics of a trial, is that every single clinical trial has to go through an institutional review board. And an institutional review board is a group of professionals, including an ethicist, who reviews a clinical trial protocol and has to approve it. And usually the institutional review boards consist of um, physicians and nurses and pharmacists, ethicists, and um, patients also can sit on institutional review boards to bring that patient perspective into clinical trials. And I might add, there is increasing emphasis on including patients in the development of clinical trials so that um, uh, the patient perspective is, is included in the design. There are very important safeguards that are um, in place to protect patients who participate in clinical trials. In the past, uh, we have not had some of those safeguards, and unfortunately, there's been some unethical um, research conducted on humans. And over the past several decades, these um, safeguards have been put in place, and there's a patient bill of rights. So first of all, all participation in research is completely voluntary. It is your choice, and um, you also can withdraw from treatment at any time. So at every step along the way, you have a voice, you have a choice, and it's always your decision. In addition, there is the extremely important element of informed consent. And informed consent means that you have to be told exactly what the benefits are, what the potential risks are, and what the alternatives are, so that you can choose whether or not you want to participate in a clinical trial. Um, in addition, there are some other um, important aspects of the Bill of Rights, like respect for you, confidentiality of all of your medical information, and things like that. The financial obligations associated with a clinical trial really vary, and so that's an important question to ask the clinical trial team before you start a clinical trial. So, for example, um, sometimes there is financial assistance for housing. For example, if you need to stay close to the clinical trial facility, sometimes there is reimbursement for parking or transportation. Sometimes there's reimbursement for the clinical trial medication. Um, so that really varies from trial to trial. And um, generally, part of it, part of the costs are, are taken care of by the clinical trial and um, part by the insurance. There are sometimes out-of-pocket costs, and it's important to know about that ahead of time. If you're on a clinical trial and it's not working for you, then um, you can unenroll from that clinical trial. And then and the future treatment options would be discussed with your physician to talk about what alternative treatments, what standard of care treatments are available for you. But if you're on a clinical trial and it's not working, then um, you should not stay on that clinical trial.